Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of the Barefoot Genealogist. Uh, today I am actually on vacation, hence the lovely no makeup look, but I did want to spend a few minutes just pre-recording a video for you um, so that you had something to watch at our regularly scheduled time. Um, I'm recording this a few hours early, so of course I won't be available on chat immediately following this presentation. But today's topic was really important, and so I didn't want to just skip it or hand it off to someone else. I wanted to make sure that I had a few minutes to talk to you about honoring our um, fallen military heroes. And uh, here in the United States, we will be celebrating Memorial Day in just a couple of weeks. I'm not sure how that snuck up on us, but uh, Memorial Day was originally instituted as a, an opportunity for us to commemorate those who had lost their lives in battle. Of course, it has um, kind of grown to encompass those who, um, just remembering those who have passed on in general. And of course, then we have Veterans Day later in the year to commemorate anybody who served in the armed forces. On Ancestry.com, we have a lot of ways to search for military records. We have a lot of military records available through both Ancestry.com and Fold3. And then we have a really unique way to honor those military um, people in your family tree. And so that's just what I want to cover today in the few minutes that we have together. Uh, and hopefully that will give you some inspiration or some ideas about what, um, who you can find and what you can do to honor them. So let's dive into today's presentation. Let me just give you a quick review. I think I've covered this before, but for those of you who are new and have joined us, um, you might want to later on pause the screen to capture some of this information. But this is just a chart that I created for myself so that I can see um, both the major conflicts that have occurred that U.S. military forces have been involved in, um, and of course that's down the center of the page. Over here on the left, you're going to see the years that those con that conflict, um, the major years that that conflict with, that we were engaged in it, and then over here on the right hand side, um, I've kind of created a rough outline. Now, of course, this is not exact, but a rough um, guideline here for the birth years of the men and then later on, of course, the women who would have been involved in that particular conflict. So for example, here, if we look at the Civil War, um, the Civil War is going to be typically men who were born between the years of 1806 and 1848. Um, on the outside, the men in the middle range of that set of years are going to be um, our, our core group of soldiers for that time period. It's just a handy chart to help you start to see um, where the men in your tree may have served, what, um, where you need to start looking for records for them. Like I said, you may want to come back to this screen and pause it so that you can capture some of this information for yourself um, later. Now, let's talk just about military for records for just a minute. Um, the first question, of course, when we do any genealogical research um, needs to revolve around this idea of what records exist. I often get asked questions about um, military service records, particularly ar army service records from World War I and World War II. For those of you who are not aware, there was a fire in the St. Louis Army, the, where the personnel records were stored in St. Louis in the 1970s, and more than 80% of those records were destroyed. And so there are not a lot of army service records available for that time period. However, there are other records, enlistment records, and draft cards. Um, of course, keep in mind, just because your ancestor shows up in a draft card, that doesn't mean they actually served. Um, however, um, enlistment records, service records, pension files, all of those, um, land bounty warrants, all of those are indications of military service. Now, the wiki on Ancestry.com is a really useful tool, and so for those of you who haven't used it before, let me just point out where you're going to find it. If you hover over the Learning Center, come down here to Family History Wiki and click on that, you're going to see we have taken the books The Source and The Red Book, and we've put them online available for free. You don't have, you don't have to have a subscription to access this. Over here on the um, top right, you're going to see Record Categories. I can click on any of those. So for example, I could click on military records and it's going to take me to a table of contents where I can look up military information about military records by state. Or I would strongly suggest you start with this overview of military records if you're just 
wanting to learn about what records are available. It's a really excellent, excellent article um, out of the source written about what military records are available. Of course, there's some links to additional information about service records or veterans benefits. Um, and then, of course, you can go back to that state page. So that's all going to be in the Ancestry.com wiki, where you can just learn a little bit more about military records before you dive in and start searching them. Now, to find out what's available on Ancestry.com, of course, you're going to want to use the card catalog. Um, again, for those of you who um, haven't been with us before, you're going to find the card catalog by hovering over search and then going down to that bottom option, card catalog. When you get there, it's going to look a little bit like this. Um, it's going to show you a list of databases sorted by popularity. Now over here on the left hand side, you're going to see some filters. One of those categories to filter to is military records. Of course, then the subcategories under military records are where things get really interesting. You can look things up by draft records, enlistment records, or service. Um, there is an entire section of casualty records, so you're going to find in there things like this database, which is um, a database that I have actually used quite a bit recently. It's from the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, it is their, their burial index, uh, their death file burial index, from 1850 through 2010. So it covers a huge period of time, and there are f almost 14 and a half million records in that one database. So I can come in here and I could search for um, people that I knew had served in the military um, and were deceased. Now, of course, one of the things I'm going to recommend that you always do is that you scroll down past that search box and read this database description. It's going to give you information about where the information in this index came from, who holds the originals, what to do once you find a record, what further information you can um, you can get to because of that information. So always read that database description. But this U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs um, BIRLS death file from 1850 to 2010, if you're just getting started in military research, is probably going to be one of the best databases that you can look into just to get your toes wet and to start to find some of the records for your military ancestors. Uh, there are other databases, of course, to explore here in the card catalog. Um, it goes on to talk about um, prisoner rolls and lists, pension records, which are a gold mine of information, um, military histories. So these are going to be maybe not necessarily name-based histories, but if you know what regiment your, uh, your ancestor served in or what commanding officer they served under, you can search for one of them. And what that will do is um, bring up a history of that regiment, the battles that they were engaged in, where they were stationed, maybe some of the unique things about that particular organization or group um, at the time. There's going to be some, a database, several databases here of awards and honors. There's going to be some news. We've actually got some news reels online. If you remember those old military news reels that used to play in the theaters before movies, we've actually digitized quite a large collection of those and have those available online. Those are not name based. And so you're never going to find those just searching for your person, but you would find those by exploring the card catalog here. Of course, then we also have this database of disciplinary actions. Hopefully you're not finding your ancestor in there, but unfortunately the black sheep tend to generate the biggest paper trail. And so sometimes um, it's exciting to find something in there because it's going to give you more information about the family. And then we have several collections of photos. Some of those are um, photos of tombstones. Some of those are photos of um, lots of photos from Library of Congress of actual military action through the years, including, I believe, several Civil War photos, which is kind of fascinating to just think about the fact that we have access to photos from that long ago. So I would encourage you to spend some time in the card catalog exploring over 1,100 databases that contain military or military-related records. Now, um, let's just talk briefly about Fold3. Fold3.com used to be footnote.com. Ancestry.com purchased it, um, the, that company, several years ago. And you may notice that when you do some searches on Ancestry.com, we actually don't, we don't have the record on Ancestry.com. It's on Fold3. That Fold3 has a very strong military focus. 
As a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why we have made the decision to keep it as a separate website is because there are people, there are a lot of people who are interested in military history who have very little interest in family history. And so we make those records available on that website independently. Now, if you have an Ancestry.com subscription, you can get 50% off a subscription to Fold3. I would encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, they've got just an amazing collection of military records for you to explore there as well. And then finally, um, here, just in accessing these records, I just want to remind you that you can search military records only, and I would encourage you to do that. One of the things um, we try to do on Ancestry.com is to give you a multitude of ways to access the data. And we have 11 billion records on our website, and depending on how you search, different things may float to the top of the list. So I, I often will come into the card catalog, look for a specific database, and search that one specific database. Sometimes I just come in to search all records and I do this, what we call a global search of all 11 billion records. Of course, that usually will give me, you know, one and a half million search results, but I'm looking for what floats to the top. The other thing you can do here under search is you may notice there are categories and military is one of those categories. So I can actually come to this military search page and I could do a search of all military records here, or I could narrow it even further by category. So again, it's those same categories that were in the card catalog. Um, I could look through some of the featured data collections, or, and this one is particular of particular interest to me, I can come over here and I can search by conflict. So Revolutionary War, Civil War, World War I, World War II, or other conflicts, other conflicts of course being um, Vietnam and Korea, where those records have been made public, um, the War of 1812, just some, you know, the Indian Wars, just some different conflicts we've kind of lumped together. So if you know, for example, that you're searching for records about a Civil War ancestor, start there. Just click on Civil War and search only the Civil War records instead of having to filter through all of the, the other things there. We also provided you with some additional helps here. So, so um, it looks like there's a couple of articles. There are a couple of articles available and then also a free webinar. It's an hour long class about military records that you can just watch on your computer, much like this, um, only directly on Ancestry.com's website. So I would encourage you to spend some time um, getting familiar with the military records, um, learning a little bit more about the different conflicts and what records are available, and then see what's available online both at Ancestry.com and at Fold3.com, and then spend some time searching those military records for the people in your family tree. Now, once you have done that, we have we wanted to provide you with a way to honor those military ancestors or those who served. And so there are a couple of things that you can do. One is you can actually create a military memorial page for anyone in your family tree. I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. And then you can search other memorial pages. You can look at what other people have done to honor the military service of those in their tree. So let me just go to, this is my great grandfather here in my tree. And he served in the United States Army. He actually was a career military man. He joined the Army and served um, in uh, the, the, let's see if I can remember what this is. <laughs> he served in um, the, it, 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 the word just left my mind. Anyway, um, I knew the name of the company that he served in down in Texas where uh, he was sent across the border several times um, in the fight against Pancho Villa. And so he wrote letters back and forth to my great grandmother and we have copies of those letters and pictures of him in his uniform and on his horse. And, and then when World War I broke out, he was sent to Europe in World War I. And then following World War I, he was actually sent to San Francisco where he was stationed for a while. And then he was sent to Los Angeles where he ran the recruiting office in Los Angeles uh, until he retired shortly before his death. And so you can see here I've attached his discharge certificate uh, to his profile. There are some other pictures and things that I could upload and attach to him there. Now, under more options, so you're going to see that right over here 
on the profile page. If I hover over more options, you're going to see one of the options is to create a military page. So it automatically does that. Now I can add additional photos if I would like. I can then, let me scroll down here, I can add uh, a story about his military service, maybe a story about how my great grandmother and her younger sister snuck off to go see the soldiers perform um, a little um, horse parade at the state fair and that's how they met. I could write, maybe I could include some of the letters that he wrote, anything I want. I can include that information here. Uh, I can include a text, I can include photo, or I can have an audio story. If you have um, a military service person in your family who's still living maybe, you want to capture their voice telling some information about their military service. Um, at the bare minimum, I would encourage you to come over here on the right or the left hand side and edit some of this basic information. It's pulled information in from my tree, but I can then add the years of his service. I could add the branch of service that he served in, in this case, the US Army, the rank that he maybe either went in or uh, was discharged at, the units he served with, the, his specialty, which I, I know all of this information. So I could just click edit and go through and add all of this information. I could then add uh, information about his service record. So if I know what war or wars he served in, what specific battles he may have been involved in, and then what awards he received, I could include each of those. So it's just, again, it's just a way to honor those who have served um, in particular, I would encourage you this Memorial Day maybe to do this for those who um, have died while in that service at the very least. You can make the, the this page is, def, is public by default. Obviously, I'm on vacation. I'm having a hard time coming up with words today. Um, this page is public by default. You can change it to private if you would prefer that. You can also then, there's a little link here, view other military pages so that you can see some of the things that others have created or just spend a moment thinking about and looking at some of the service that has been offered. You can see here we have more than 217,000 of these pages that have been created and they've been created for people all through time. In fact, you can see just by looking at this page, people who died in this case in World War II in service, um, or maybe have passed away serving in more recent conflicts, uh, Korea, of course, then uh, Abraham Lincoln didn't die in military service. Well, I guess he died while he was the president of the United States, which made him the commander in chief at the time. Not everybody who has a memorial page here has passed away. It's just a page commemorating their military service. And then of course, some of them, it's they did not die while in military service, but they served and so a page has been created to honor their service. So all of that, you can just um, browse through this or sort it um, based on name if you wanna be able to search that way. There is also a way if you put rank information or branch of service information on one of your memorial pages, you can then search by other people who had that same rank or were in that same branch of service. So just an interesting, but I think very meaningful way to honor those who have served in the United States Armed Forces in particular, as we approach this Memorial Day and think about those in particular who lost their lives uh, in service to their country. That is all I have prepared for you today. I warned you it would be brief. <laughs> um, if you are watching this live, by all means, feel free to stick around and chat with each other. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, I am currently on vacation. And so um, I have pre-recorded today's video and will not be available live on chat. I will actually be driving home at the time that you are having your chat. So uh, I will miss you today, but I will be a be back on Thursday. And if you're watching an archived version of this on our YouTube channel, the address there is at the bottom of the screen. If um, you need to go there and, and see what other videos we have available, we have the full archive available there. This video, of course, will be uploaded to our YouTube channel shortly. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.